Scientology and the ongoing Danny Masterson trial. Something slightly different in this episode, I'm going to be bringing you highlights from the Danny Masterson trial so far. We are on day six today with Tony Ortega from the underground bunker bringing us live updates from the media pool. Trigger warning, this segment does come with details of sexual assault and violent imagery, so please pursue with caution and discretion. Hello listeners and welcome to today's segment of Cult News. I'm your speaker Casey. If you find this information helpful or interesting, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the YouTube channel for updates. And if you want to support the podcast, you can find me on patreon.com forward slash the cult vault. And now on to today's news. Danny Masterson, the Hollywood actor of that 70s show fame, is currently on trial for forcibly raping three women between the years of 2001 and 2003. Masterson's long-time allegiance to the Church of Scientology has shown an intrinsic pairing of both since Masterson was first charged. And although the three Jane Doe's, who are Masterson's accusers, have had to wait many years for the trial, being allegedly subjected to Scientology's scaremongering tactics of stalking and such in between, the trial is in full swing and moving along quickly. Tony Ortega of the Underground Bunker who has been reporting on Scientology since 1995 and, along with his media pass, has access to the trial. He has been sending full updates in real time to those subscribed to his mailing list. By October 18th, just five days into the trial, Danny Masterson had arrived with his wife Bijou Phillips. A few others of notability were present in the stands in support of Masterson. And then Judge Olmedo asks if either side have any issues with any of the jury members. Defence attorney for Masterson, Goldstein, identifies several jurors who will not be able to give Masterson a fair trial because they have either been victims of previous sexual assaults or they have seen the Leah Remini documentary Scientology in the Aftermath or, in some cases, they've seen both. According to the attorneys back and fro within the finalising of jury selection, one of the Jane Doe's appears in the finale episode of the series. Goldstein argues that none of these jurors will be able to act without bias. Each juror was then asked if they could be impartial and unbiased. Some answered yes and some answered no. By the end, seven jurors were sworn in, five women and two men. And then the courthouse were on break. Quite a lot to process, but before the day was out, there was a live report from the courtroom from Tony Ortega, who proceeded to send details of opening statements, which included Deputy DA Reinhold Mueller for The People outlining the details of the case and what the jury can expect from the trial. Daniel Masterson is on trial for the forcible rape of Jane Doe 1, Jane Doe 2 and Jane Doe 3. Mueller speaks of how Jane Doe 1 grew up in Los Angeles and graduated from a Scientology-based school named the Delphi Academy. She was a second-generation Scientologist and grew up with a tight-knit group of friends within the religion, which is how she became acquainted with Masterson in the late 1990s. Masterson is second generation too, according to the report. JD1's best friend, Bree Schaefer, who also happened to be a Scientologist and Masterson's personal assistant, is key to JD1's story. The report is very detailed and goes into the events that unfolded in September 2002. That, in essence, includes information that JD1 was supposed to meet Schaefer one evening, but Masterson showed up instead explaining that Schaefer had been involved in some kind of fight and that JD1 should go back to his house with him and meet Schaefer in the morning to catch a flight. After a drink, JD1 became intoxicated and fuzzy and accompanied Masterson to his home. Despite promising her the guest bedroom, Masterson began kissing JD1 before flipping her over and penetrating her anally. JD1 reports feeling very fuzzy at this time from the alcohol and at this point, and despite fighting off her alleged attacker, he continued to assault her. At one point, he even grabbed a gun out of the bedside table and held it to JD1's head, threatening her not to move. JD1 allegedly shared the events of this incident with Bree Schaefer and others, including Lisa Marie Presley, who has been seen on the witness list of those who will be called to testify later in the trial. There is then a lot of information around why JD1 did not report the rape to law enforcement immediately, talking about the regimented belief system that prevented this, There is also further information on how Masterson would forcibly rape JD1 again in the near future, in 2003, after slipping her a fruity red cocktail and dragging her into the jacuzzi. Amongst this account are details of Masterson shoving his fingers 
down JD1's throat to make her vomit, putting her in the shower as JD1 struggled to walk through intoxication and then penetrating her vaginally despite her attempts to fight him off. 48 hours later, her family noticed bruises and asked what has happened. She mentioned the assault to some family members and friends, one of them being an ethics officer in Scientology who told her this wasn't rape because they do not use that word and that she is forbidden from telling the police. This is considered in the religion as a high crime and if reported could result in JD1 being labelled a suppressive person, essentially shunned from everyone and everything that she has ever known. In 2004, she did go to law enforcement but nothing was followed up until 2016 when she was contacted by law enforcement and informed that other victims had come forward. There is then information on JD Three's conversion to Scientology after meeting Masterson when his friends crashed a party of hers. They were soon dating, but by November 2001, Masterson had become increasingly controlling and sexually aggressive. JD3 would allegedly wake up at times and often find Masterson on top of her, assaulting her. She describes trying to fight him off but being pinned down. Despite Masterson having some sort of no hair touching, no face touching rule, JD3 did what she thought was her only option and began pulling on Masterson's hair. This caused Masterson to strike JD3 across the face before spitting on her and telling her that she was white trash. JD3 reports other incidents of sexual assault from Danny Masterson and then reports it to the Celebrity Centre. Her ethics officer, Miranda Scoggins, and her husband, Chris Scoggins, begin to tell JD3 that it couldn't have been rape because she was 2D, which means second dynamic, a spouse or a partner. Soon the defence calls for objection for the third time and Judge Olmedo calls for a sidebar. After a while, Mueller begins again, stating that JD3 believed the gaslighting tactics used on her by the Scoggins, that perhaps she caused this, that she trusted the church. Many years later, JD3 would tell her husband, who would inform her that this was, in fact, rape. Her incidents occurred between October to December 2003. In 2016, she finally came forward and made an incident report to law enforcement. JD2 became a Scientologist at age 16 after her mother introduced her to the church. She would see Masterson at various gatherings and her incidents occurred between October to December 2003. At a gathering, Masterson was staring intently at JD2 before insisting on taking her number. A few days later, he began calling her, encouraging her to come over. JD2 agreed on the conditions that they did not get in the jacuzzi or have sex. Maybe a glass of wine and some kissing, but that would be it. After arriving at Masterson's home and having a glass of wine, she began to feel very drunk. Masterson began insisting that she gets in the jacuzzi, but JD refused, saying she didn't bring a bathing suit. After becoming very fuzzy, they ended up in Masterson's shower, who was now becoming very aggressive. Masterson began touching her groin. JD too refused, but then soon he was penetrating her vaginally. He flipped her over and began penetrating her so aggressively it made her throw up in her mouth. Mueller ends his opening statements on how he thinks the jury will find Daniel Masterson guilty of forcible rape on all three counts. Philip Cohen for the defence then commences opening statements, detailing that Mueller has explained what the evidence will show, but goes on to say how there is a pattern of behaviour between all three accusers, who were each told not to discuss the case with other victims, but that each of them have actually done so, contaminating the case. The opening statement then includes information that JD1 had told the LA Police Department that consensual sex had happened between the two of them and that she made no initial mention of a gun until later and goes on to detail that JD2 and JD3 similarly have included things in statements that appear to be fabricated or added later on. The jury then break for lunch and after this the defence concludes its opening statements before JD1 is called to the stand. During this segment JD1 retells in grueling detail much of what was outlined in the opening statements by Mueller with lots of objections from the defence team. JD1 goes on to say the line, fraternising with the enemy, which causes the trial to erupt in some sort of frenzy, with the defence calling for a mistrial due to the involvement of Scientology in this case, in the opening statements and now in the statements of Jane Doe. There is more detail in this, as you can see, but here is where I will wrap up Cult News 10 with an aim to bring you more information tomorrow, as well as other stories in the Cultiverse. As I mentioned, this is all from the Underground Bunker on TonyOrtega.org's website reporting live from the trial so please consider heading over 
or follow the links in the episode description to find his blog and website and subscribe for live and meticulous details. This has been The Cult News. If you have found this content interesting or helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And if you'd like to support the podcast further, you can find me at patreon.com forward slash the cult vault. I'm your speaker, Casey, host of the Cult Vault podcast.